Hello dear, myself, Fala Mokwana, Assistant Professor of EC Department at LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. Welcome to the session of Radar and Navigation Aids. Now, in the previous session we have finished unit number 9. So, in today's session we are going to start unit number 10 that is Hyperbolic System of Navigation. First of all, what do we mean by hyperbolic system? We are going to study in this session. Second, what is visible and what are different hyperbolic systems like Laura and Deca. Okay. Now, the definition of hyperbolic navigation system. So, it is basically a measurement of the difference in time of receiving a signal from each and every earth station okay because there is only one receiver and there are multiple transmitters are there so at which time a specific signal is going to be arrived okay and secondly as there are two or more transmitter onto the ground and the receiver in the diagram okay so we are going to calculate or we are going to measure the difference in the time of reaching of the EM waves okay actually there are total four types of hyperbolic navigation system LoRa, Deca, Consort and Omega but as per the JTU syllabus, we need to only study two hyperbolic system that is Laura and Deca. Now, what is the full form of Laura? So Laura stands for Long Range Navigational Aids. So this name that is the hyperbolic electronic system arises from the fact that a locus of the point which have a constant value of such a delay is hyperbola on a plane surface. Right? So in other words we can say that when you know the difference in your distance from the two objects, one is lies over here, another one is here. So if you need to calculate the difference from which you are actually located. Okay. So based on the difference, you know you are on the curve line defined by the fixed difference. Okay. So, what is the principle of hyperbolic electronic system? Let us take one example. So, consider a two station A and B, okay, which make a synchronous transmitter. And there is only one receiver, that is a receiver P, which lies over here. To receive and to measure the interval between the time of arrival of radiation from two stations from station A station B so we need to calculate the arrival of that EM wave okay so the interval TB is equals to PA upon C minus PB upon C that means arrival of signal at receiver P from the station A that is P A okay and arrival of signal from the station B at receiver P okay that is P B we are going to take the difference all right divided by C stands for it's the velocity of EM wave right so in the hyperbolic navigation system this receiver measures the difference in time of that received radio waves. Over here, two radio waves are coming from station A and station B. 
and this time difference is going to be converted into the distance difference based on the speed of EM waves. Right? Now first we are going to focus on Loran system. It can have a Loran A, Loran B, Loran C. But for the GTU syllabus, the most important is Loran A. Okay. So Loran stands for Long Range Navigation A. Okay. Which is operating in the frequency range of 1750 to 1950 kHz. Okay, but it is a less accurate. Why? Because the system required at least a three transmitting station for each chain. A chain represents a group of transmitting station. Okay, and the observer used a special Loran receiver. So as I told you, as it requires a three station in which one is master, two is the slave station. So the combination of this master and the slave station is called a chain. Okay. So comparatively, the Loran A system is less accurate. The difference in arrival of two time pulse from the pair of the stations are going to be measured and going to be displayed on CR in this cathode ray view. Right? So each fix required a two observation and it took so five minutes. That's why it is less accurate. Okay. And this reading are going to be plotted on the Loran lattice chart. And the position can be plotted. That means whether my target is moving towards the radar or moving away from the radar. So this signals for pulse. It is not going to be a continuous wave. Alright. In Loran system, it is relatively a small transmitter. Transmitter could achieve the high peak power levels. So, a maximum reliable range for Loran is 700 miles by day and 1400 miles at night. Okay. Now the range and the precision of standard Loran is based on which frequency it is going to be operated. Loran operates in the upper medium frequency band both for ground wave and the sky wave receptions are possible. Right? Ground wave is possible mainly in the day and particularly a good over the sea okay but at the night ground and sky will both the receptions are possible for the navigation at least two stations are required for coverage okay so the area of coverage it depends on two parameter first one is the maximum range of the station and the distance between the station okay distance between the station so this service area depends on latitude of the region, season of the year, and the time of the day. Okay. For the ground wave, the average range over the sea in latitude is around 
600 kilometers and in the equatorial region about 500 kilometers okay so the range over a land is less about half or third compared to sea okay so the sky wave range which are the same over land and sea Okay, it is higher, appreciably higher. So the accuracy of Loran system is dependent on which time interval measurement can be made. It is also dependent on the signal strength. The other factor which is dependent, which on the accuracy, is in which the ground stations are going to be synchronized. Okay. After achieving these two factors, the probability of error is around 1.5 to 2 microsecond in the measurement of that interval. Okay, it can be have this uh, delay of this two microsecond for the arrival of signal. Okay, because the error may be introduced because of the sky wave propagation as the path taken by the sky wave is longer one by the ionosphere as the ionosphere is made up of full of ions which are randomly located 